In today's show, we're going to learn how to use Power Apps to upload a file to a SharePoint document library. That's right. No crazy code, no parsing, no fixing up stuff. We, I finally solved it after a year and a half, how to make a simple button that just grabs any file you want and sticks it straight into SharePoint document libraries. I'm so excited. But first, here's our intro. Hi, my name is Shane Young with Power Apps 911. Those guys. In today's show, we're going to finally upload a file straight to a SharePoint document library from Power Apps. That's right, folks. I have been trying to figure out how to do this for about a year and a half. Uh, and to be clear, other people have kind of found ways of doing it, but I've never loved any of the ways, right? They've been very complicated. We've been hacking triggers and writing really complicated flow actions or you know, one of my customers, like we put a file over there in an attachment and then we move it. I mean, there's just a lot of really chaotic ways that we've done it. And so I've never loved enough, any of those enough to share with you or to really use any of my solutions. So today I'm going to show you what I have finally solved. Thanks to uh, someone else out on uh, Twitter. His name's Ramiro. I'll have a link below to his uh, content, but he had come up with one of those more complicated versions of solutions, uploading lots of files, which was awesome and it works. But in his video, he had this little one little step that he took that I had never thought of. And I stole that one piece and they were take it and bring it into my super simplified solution. And I'm so happy. So good job, Ramiro. Thanks for sharing, right? And this is what the community is all about. People post content and then others build upon it. And so the same with this. Hopefully when I post this, you guys can take this and run and do even more cooler things with it. Okay, I know that's enough talking. You guys just want to see this. Chewy is sitting over there. Chewy is tired of hearing me talk about it. So let's just switch over to my desktop and take a look. So over here on my desktop, I thought the first thing we should do is just show it to you, right? So upload a file straight to SharePoint document library. Yes, please. I'm going to click on this. Notice when it pops up, it shows me all files. It doesn't just say image files. You have to switch it. It says all files. Very cool. And then let's just say, let's upload, I don't know. Let's grab a picture of Chewy over here real quick. So we've got logos. And we will, there you go, there's Chewy sticker. And then after a second or so, we can launch SharePoint file. And this would actually open the file straight in SharePoint. Yeah! Right, but you're like, ah, oh, it's an image, Shane. You've kind of done image stuff before. That's fair. Let's do it again. Let's go over here. And this time, let's say, let's uh, go to my desktop. Let's upload this PDF. Launch that SharePoint file. Duh, PDF. It works for Excels, it works for Word documents. I've used it a lot of different ways and so far so good. Uh, really the only limitation I found with it so far is the attachment control only lets you have up to 10 meg files. So I've not uh, used this to attach files larger than 10 megs. I'll be honest, in none of my customer scenarios has that been a hold up, right? So I've not tried to find ways to do larger files. So I don't know where this breaks on the high end, just so we're all on the same page, but Man, file zero to 10 megs, this, this process is kick butt. And you know, here we can see I've kind of built it my way, but what we're gonna do now is we'll switch over, we're gonna build it completely from scratch so you understand how we do it mechanically and then what you guys make the UI look like or how you handle the file links, what you do with them. You know, that's up to you. Because what I'm really imagining, you know, this launch SharePoint file was cute to show you how smart I was, yay. But in reality, I'm imagining most of the time you want to get that file link back and then store it in some other location so you can have a reference. You know, oh, I attached this file to a SharePoint document library. I need a link back to that file. So that's what I'm imagining. But, you know, you guys take, build from this. Do something cool with it yourself. Okay. You want to see how we do this? I bet you do. So let's switch over to the Maker Portal. All right. Over here in the Maker Portal, I have a brand new blank app, and all I've done is grab the attachment control. And so there's a link below to the video if you haven't seen it where we talk about how I go in and create a SharePoint form and I steal the attachment control so I can use that for other things. So I'm not going to go over those principles again. This video will be long enough without all that extra stuff, but it's in the other video if you need to see it. But the big reason that we do this is if we hit play, when you click attach a file, you get all files, the ability to reference all the files on here versus the default one that we've used for years was we would go over here and say insert media and the add picture control, which we all know and love, but the downside of that control was that it defaults to all file or to image files, and then you gotta change it. So boo on that control for this solution. So bye bye. Okay, so now we've picked our control, you know, named it attachment control. It's all I've done. So then what we want is we're going to actually grab a media control and an image. Weirdly enough, this image control is the key, the piece, missing piece that I did not understand. 
And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and attach file real quick. So attach file. And I'm going to attach a small image file for now. We're going to do all files, but a small image file was the easiest way to work through how all this works. So we're going to say open. So there it is done. And so then we go to the image control and we're like, hey, what I want you to show me is the last record in attachment control dot attachments, right? Attachment control dot attachments is all the attachments in that control. In our case, we only have one. I want the last one though, because I need a specific record. And then I want the value. And there you go, you can see Chewy's cute little icon. Yay, Chewy icon. So that, <laughs> believe it or not, this is the thing that Ramiro taught me and that I love. All right, so if we copy this out and we throw some labels on the screen, we're gonna just kind of make sure you guys understand what happens here. So if you do this, you can see that you get this built-in A-Press Blob Manager thing. And if we throw another label on the screen and we say, all right, instead of that, what I wanna do is I'm going to actually say, I want, what is the image control? Image one. So we're gonna say we want image one dot image. But here I go, it's the same thing, right? Which makes sense. So here I go, what was the point of that? Here's the point. Grab a button, and I'm gonna say, hey, button. What I want you to do is I want you to set var demo to be the value over here. So this, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna, or I guess I should say var demo from attachment control. And so we're gonna pipe that into the JSON function, which there's a couple videos on that also. So once again, if you haven't seen those, I'll put links below. But what the JSON function is supposed to do is um, encode this for us. So include binary data. So we do like that and we do like that. And so then now if I press that button, I have a variable called var demo attach control. So I'm gonna throw a label on the screen, throw it down here and we're gonna say var demo attachment control. And you can see that all it had was that A press stuff and it put it in some quotes. Yeah. Okay. So now I'm going to say though, instead of using this, I'm going to use image one dot image, right? Which you're like, that's the same thing, which is what I thought for the longest time. It's the reason I never tried this. I'm going to paste this in here. I'm going to say alt button. <gasps> what is that? Let's turn on scroll real quick on this. Hit play. It is the actual file contents. I've needed this for so long. This is it. You, some of you probably, the light bulbs went off. You're like, all right, I got it. I don't need you anymore, Shane. Bye, guys. Um, but the rest of you, you're probably not as excited yet. But this, this is the thing that I needed. So what I was trying for the longest time was to get the take this value and pass it the JSON function, which you guys saw just spits out that A-press thing that doesn't do anything. But for whatever reason, I don't understand why, no one will ever know, but by referencing the image control of the JSON function, it's like, oh, that's an image. I can encode that. Ready for the crazier part? Go over here. We'll attach another file. Let's attach, we'll go back to my desktop. Let's attach um, an Excel workbook, right? So upload this Excel. Doop, 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 doop. Press our button. Look at that. It knows it is an open XML format, op op office document, spreadsheet, sheet, base 64. And then everything after this comma, that's the actual file. This is really exciting. Whew, calm down, Shane. You got to make a video. Calm down. Okay. So what we're going to do now that we have solved this piece, now that I have that raw data, everything else is borderline child's play at this point. So what we're going to do is the first thing I want to do is this is everything. This is the type of file and the base 64 encoding. I only need the encoded portion. So pretty much everything after this comma. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a little, little fix up here, we'll give it a little love. And for right now, just to help us learn, we're gonna do it in separate ste uh, steps. So var uh, base64, yeah, base64 only, like that. And so what we're going to do is we're going to do a bunch of our string manipulation work in order to parse out this file so that we can uh, get just the, the pieces in there. What do you guys think? Think I can write this off the top of my head? Eh, maybe. So what we're gonna do is we're going to do a mid function. And let's see, so what is the text that we wanna do mid of? We wanna do the var demo from attachment control because that's our happy text. 
what character do I want to start at? I want to use the find function and I'm going to find the text of a comma in var demo from attachment control. So I want to find the comma and I want to add one because I don't want the comma. I want to start, right? So when we get this right, the very first character for us is going to be a U. Okay, so we're going to do that. And let's see, so that is our mid function. Um, or that, that is where we want to start. So we, if we want to grab everything from there to the end, let's just do that just to show you kind of what happens. So that closes out the mid function, that closes out the set function. So then now if we press the alt button, boop, and then we're still another label on here. And in here we're going to do var base 64 only and we'll turn on our scroll bars as well. Okay, so then look, now we, we, got, we, we basically just stripped out all of this and we start at the U, because that's the actual file. But we're not done yet, because if you go all the way to the bottom, there is that, the JSON thing throws on these quotes. And if you go to the bottom of our file right here, our file would be corrupt because that quote is not valid. So we gotta pull that off the end. And so the way that I did it, right, in text manipulation, it's all about how you wanna do it, I guess, but. The way that I would do it, and I'm guessing that's what you guys want me to show you how I would do it. Um, the mid function allows you to, um, right, so if you hover over mid or you go in here, it's like text and start number, comma, dot, 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 the ellipses. The ellipses are optional, and what we can do is we can set the length. How much data do we want? Well, what we really want here is we're going to want the length of the uh, entire file, right? So that's var demo from attachment control. Oh, I gotta hit tab. So I want that, but then I need to subtract out from that um, the midpoint or the uh, the find, the location, right? Remember, because this find right here, this spits out a number. Let's grab this right here. Oh, let's try again. All right, so it spits out 79. Stripping out those first 79 characters. So we're gonna go in here, we're gonna say subtract out that. And then what I wanna do is I want to subtract out I believe two more. All right, so it's mad at me for something. Let's figure out why it's mad at me. Oh, nope, you know what it is? It's right here. This parenthesis doesn't go there. That parenthesis goes at the end. There we go. Oh, and I think this is just minus one. So let's just press it and see what happens. Let's we'll see how close we get. So we'll say button. All right, we still start with a U. We end with five A's. So we go to the end. We end with one, two, three, four, five A's. Ooh, I got it early. Wow, good job, Shane. Um, so here's the thing about this function, right? If this is like your like, mind is melting, just steal it, right? It's on the screen right now, just copy it. Or if you're one of our curated content people, you can just go download this function. You don't have to type any of it. But the great thing about the way that I wrote it here is I didn't hard code anything. So it works just as well for this Excel file, whereas if we go back and attach a PDF and then press the button again. What happened, right? Everything changed. So now this is a smaller thing, but this one starts with JV. This one starts with JV. I started on JV once upon a time. Down here, this ends with two equal signs and this equals ends with two equal signs. So that's why it's important to write this formula, right? This whole chaotic piece, you have to write it in a way that can handle different file types. And so that's why you have to use these find and link functions. And I think I have a separate video on that as well. Maybe I'll post that. I'm just gonna post links to all my videos. Watch all hundred of them. Anyway, so there you go. So now we know how to get this data out. Now what it's time to do is how do we get it into SharePoint? So we have the base 64. So we're gonna go over here. We're going to write the world's simplest flow. New, instant, from blank. We're gonna call this easy upload. That's what we're gonna call it. Our triggers gonna be Power Apps. We're going to say create. There you go, Power Apps. Action one is done. Action two, new step. We're going to search for SharePoint. Oh my goodness, we're gonna spell SharePoint correctly though. And so in the SharePoint connector, there is a create file somewhere in here. There it is. And so it's like, hey, where do you want to create it? Well, good question. I want to create it in my Power Apps video site. Do, 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 do. There they are. <coughs> oh, bless me, I just sneezed. And then folder path, well, I'm gonna go in here. And so there are the document library. And then, 
Honestly, go back over here. Where is my, oh, there's my shared documents. That's what I wanted. So in shared documents, I created a folder called files uploaded from Power Apps. We're going to click on that. So that is a folder location. It's going to stick it in. And so then the file name, well, that's fair. We'll just ask Power Apps for the file name. Boop. File content, we will do see more here and ask in Power Apps as well. Now, it seems like that's all you should have to do, but in reality, SharePoint does not store base64 files like the rest of the world. SharePoint stores them in binary for some weird reason. So now that I've created that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to X out of it. We're going to write another quick little expression. And what it's going to be is it's going to be base64 to binary. So this is going to take that long strings that we just were sending over and re-encode it. Once again, though, you don't care. You don't have to understand really what's going on here. All you have to do is give it the string. And what is the string that you want to give it? You want to give it the file contents that we're sending over. That's it, right? Now, one of the things I do a lot of times here, and we're going to do for you guys to make this easier for you to see it, the whole thing written out. If you click on this and do expression, oh, how about this? Come on, flow. Thank you. I'm going to do a control A, control C. Because that's so hard to read, that editor is kind of terrible. We're going to add a comment, and I just paste in, boom. And so then now I can see exactly what that expression looks like. So that, once again, easier for you guys to, to see it and do it. But remember, your trigger body is going to be dynamic. It should be the same if you followed my exact steps. But your trigger body can be anything. It's just that, that long string of text we send over. The other thing that we're going to do, yeah, you know, I promised you we could do this in two steps. I've done it, but I, I realized in building the demo app that I wanted to be able to respond. So to respond, I'm going to give a third step. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in Power Apps here, boop, and respond to Power Apps just like this. We're going to add an output. We're going to add a text output, and we're going to call this SharePoint File Link. So that way you can know you can get the value back, right? Because creating a file in SharePoint is great, but most of the time you want that back so you can use it, send it an email, save it off to your data source. You probably want that link back in your app. So I thought I'd just go ahead and save you guys, leave me the YouTube comments on where is that at? Here that is. So then what you have to do here is you have to know your SharePoint URL. So I'm going to go over my SharePoint URL, right? So there's my SharePoint URL. We're going to copy that out. We're going to paste that in. We're going to get rid of this trailing slash though. And so then there's dynamic content called created a file and there is the path. And so that will just automatically grab the path of the file that we just created. So pretty straightforward, but remember this whole Shane's cows thing, that would be your tenant. I don't think any of you work here. Well, my consultants are watching this. I guess you guys do, but the rest of you, you guys got to put in all your stuff. That looks great. We'll say save. All right, after a second and a quick drink for me, it is all saved. So we'll go back over to Power Apps. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, insert another button real quick. And so on this button, we're going to say actions and flows. We'll get rid of this thing. Now, have you guys noticed I, I got the new experience? I, I don't know how I feel about the new experience yet, but that's a different story. Um, but I've got a whole bunch of new things going on over here. Oh, here, I'll show you. No, never mind, I won't. I got some cool tricks with this, though. So somewhere in here, there's the easy upload. I got lucky and found it. So we're going to add this to our app. Flow went really slow because it was mad at me for making fun of it. And so now we're going to X out of here. And I don't really need this button, so I'm just going to copy this. And then we'll just delete this button. Go away, button. My code's still here. So we'll expand out this thing with a new expander. And then we will pull this down. And then we'll do this. And so what does this say? It says easy upload.run. And so what is the file name? The file name is... Um, what that's going to be is that's going to come from our attachment control, right? So that would just be last uh, attachment control dot attachments, like so. And then uh, dot, and then there's name. Boom. And then the create file file content is that variable, so var base64 only, because we know that's exactly what we want. So we can do that. And then what we're going to do, now that that's the flow, we need to capture that return object. Oh, I pressed some button I shouldn't have. Let's try this again. So we're going to go over here, and we're actually going to say we want to set, and it's going to be var file link to the output of that. And then we're going to do a dot here, dot SharePoint file link. Just like that. 
there you go. So now if we press our lovely little button, what should happen, so we'll say play, we'll click on our button. It should take that last file we uploaded, the PDF, it should send it out there, and we should be able to go out here, do a refresh, file is uploaded from SharePoint, or Power Apps, not from SharePoint. <laughs> a few seconds ago, we uploaded this PDF. If we click on it, let's make sure it works. Yes! Oh, it's so nice. When we go back over here, we hit the X, and so if we click this thing up, boop, and so then right here, set var file link. That looks like a valid URL. So just to test it, what I'll do, so I'm gonna insert a button, right? Hit the plus, you can just grab a button from here. Watch this, you can drag them over now. Yay, boom, it goes right where you told it to. And so we'll just say, use the launch function, and we're going to launch var file link, just like that. And so if I hit play now and click on this button, it launches us straight into the file. Boom. You now have all the pieces. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to do some sum assembly required. I'm sure I'm going to lose a bunch of you here. So bye again. Uh, but that's every one of the pieces. Because now what I'm going to do is we're going to talk about how to make this control do all this without all this madness going on, right? So let's kind of simplify the process. And so the way that we're going to do it is we're going to go over here. And so with your attachment control, there is something called on add file. And so right now, I don't know, I was doing something with it before. We don't care. That was the copied code from earlier. What we want to do is we're going to grab this button's code because it does, I think, everything I want. So control C. And so we're going to say on add file. We're going to paste this in. And so let's see, it'll set the control. It'll do that. Honestly, I think that'll do everything. So the other thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to the end of it. I'm going to say, hey, I want you to reset uh, the attachment control, right? So what was it named? It was attachment control. Good job, me. So like that, that will reset it. And then we can get rid of this button. Yeah, we'll get rid of this button. We'll get rid of this. 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 We can get rid of this. So now we just have our attachment control. And so then now if we attach a file and we say, let's upload this Word document, boop. See the little ants marching and it resets black to blank. That makes me feel pretty good that if I come over here, upload this Word document and we click on it. Success. Oh, Chewy says good job. Thanks, Chewy. Okay. That's pretty cool. So then what I did from there was I just went in and I started to hack this control up to make it less apparent what was going on. Um, so I basically went in here and I just started turning things. Like I'm like, all right, your fill, where's your fill at? Instead of your fill being white, we're gonna use transparent a whole bunch. So I'm gonna set your fill to be transparent. I'm gonna copy this, I'm not type it anymore. I'm going to change the color that's set to black. We're going to change it to transparent. And then we're going to set the border color. Um, actually, yeah, we're going to set the border color to clear or transparent. There we go. And then what I did um, is I went and I set a hover border color. So that way people would know that they were coming after it. And so I set the hover border color just to black, just to make it. So the idea is when you hover over it, it turns black. Okay. Oh, and see, so that attachment, that stuff needs to go away. So let's go in here. And so that looks like there are some things like hover color. Well, we want hover color to be, oh, not white. We want it to be transparent. And then there's also a hover fill. I'm going to set that to transparent. So then now if we hover, oh, it turns like that. Okay. So you're like, well, how does people know to click that? So what I then did was I said, all right, I'm going to insert an icon. I'm going to throw the add icon over top of it like this, however you want to size it. And so then I'm going to right click on the, this and say reorder. I'm going to say send it to the back. So it's behind the attachment control, but the attachment control is completely clear. So you don't know that. So if you hit play and you hover, boom. So then now I'd have to kind of, you know, I played with the sizing and all that things, right? But that is how I built this pretty thing. This was me, you know, spending hours of my time, kind of really terrible at making things pretty and <laughs> making this thing a little bit nicer 
But that's conceptually how that works. So even though they think they're clicking the plus, in reality, they're clicking the attachment control. And when they click the attachment control, then things are firing. Oh, I broke something. Who knows? Um, yeah. And so then now we can upload our files and life is great. And in our code here, right? So remember all the code really here is about on add file. We, um, you know, we're resetting the attachment control over and over again. So we don't ever have to worry about it. Now the image control, you know, it is still has to stay here. So don't, don't go deleting it. Image control is still here, but what you want to do with the image control is you can just set it to visible is false. You know, and then just throw it over here, make it real tiny. It doesn't matter. Everything should still work. So then now if we hit play and we attach a file and this, and I have to click multiple times. I've had that weirdness happen, but it's only been happening in the play mode when I, or in the preview mode when I run the app, I've not had to click multiple times. Sometimes you get a trigger. Uh, but so if we click on like Chewy's nose, we don't care. See the little dots marching, do, 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 do. And so then over in SharePoint, there's Chewy's nose and there's Chewy's face. Um, and I think that's it. So, right. So when you're all said and done, you need these three controls on the screen. Remember you can put, get crazy with your logic. You know, you could do more things. Um, you know, you, you could go and make this thing. So it allows multiple uploads, right? Ramiro kind of covered that. You can cover that. Uh, you can come up with different ways. I know my buddy, Daniel on the, the consulting team, he, uh, he did it by using for all to loop through a series of, uh, basically run that flow over and over again for a bunch of stuff that he put into a attachments control. Um, the other thing that we'll probably do in a later video is what we're really going to do uh, for our real customers is we're going to, uh, take and make this a actual component, a power apps component. So in that way you could just reuse this component every time you want to have the, the SharePoint upload, you wouldn't have to like think through how it all worked. You would just be able to kind of plop it here in and out without, uh, putting all these pieces together. But I haven't done that yet. Uh, or I mean, I, I've done it, but I didn't want to do it in this video cause that'd be another half an hour and who wants to watch an hour video? No one. Um, Remember, if you are a subscriber to the curated content, you can just go download this app and all the codes. You don't have to type all this in. If you're not, I earned you. Yeah, no big deal. You can uh, go and recreate all this yourself and build upon this, people, right? The idea is I did this. I want you to do more with it. I want you to take this and expand on the concept and do cool things. But now that we can finally save file straight into SharePoint, we have won a year and a half of my life put to good use or bad use. I don't know. But it, it, I've been thinking about this for a really long time. So... With all that, I guess I'm just going to say thanks and have a great day. Before you go, be sure to click on the subscribe button over here. So that way you'll be notified when new videos come out. If you need any help or you want to work together, whether your problem is big or small, check us out at Power Apps 911. We do it all. I rhymed. Or if you're looking for more formal training offerings, we have those linked up here somewhere. So check them out. Thanks and have a great day.